is accept positive feedback. When someone say, hey, you look pretty today, say, yes, I do. I worked very hard to look like this. And yes, I do look pretty. Thank you. <laughs> Today with me is Chahad Agarwal. Chahad is the founder of Impact Study Biz, where she helps businesses with growth and marketing strategies. One of her key achievements has been the fact that she helped OYO to scale their business from $250 million to $10 billion, that too, in a short span of two years. Chahad is not just invested in business, but also in social causes. She's a mental health advocate who's associated with the United Nations and is currently working on bringing about social reforms. Well, how many times in life do you find people who share the same goals and vision as you? For the first time, I found someone who shares the same vision and mission as mine to help women become financially and emotionally independent, which is why I'm so excited to have Chahat on the show. Chahat, welcome to Behen Code and thank you for being here. Thank you so much for having me. It's actually lovely to speak to a person who shares the same goal and vision. And yes, it is very rare, as you said. I, I was just so. saying that how important it is for women to actually be financially and emotionally independent. And most of the people think they're two different things, but it actually goes hand in hand very well. <laughs> exactly. And, uh, you know, I personally also have struggled with being financially independent and emotionally independent. And I think what got me through the worst days of my life was the fact that at least, you know, in my head, I felt secure that, okay, I have enough money to deal with the situation or I have the support group to help me get through this time. So I think that's what helped me. And, you know, I want to pass it on to other women and, you know, when I spoke to you, I was like, hey, you know, I struggle with my career still, like there have been multiple episodes and I pick up one in particular. I remember I went for like a job interview and I was told that we will not be giving you this much money because you're not an MBA. And that kind of, you know, uh, changed something inside of me. I always felt that I was not good enough. So I got my MBA and I still continue to feel that, you know, I'm not worth it. I'm not deserving. I'm always afraid, you know, before I apply for jobs and stuff like that. And um, then I looked up online about it and, uh, you know, I was like, this is what I want to talk to you about. Like, there's no yeah. better person who, you know, who I can share this with, but you. So, you know, I'd like the... Uh, you know, I'll leave the stage open for you to speak about this topic, Sahad. Of course. And you know, what you said is right. I went through the same thing. It's very funny because we didn't speak about my experience there, but it's the exact same thing. So I, I worked at a good position, but still, do you know, I was paid less than everyone else because wow. I was the only girl at that position. And when I brought it up that why am I being paid with such a big gap, like, why am I paying, uh, being paid so little? I was told that I don't have an MBA, that's why. This was the reason that was given to me. And I was like, fine, I got an equivalent to it because I, I got multiple specializations. I actually didn't really need an MBA, so it didn't exactly. make sense. And I was like, fine, that's okay, I still got it. And then I realized that it's the preferences that happens. Because as women, we are asked to take, to be cautious, you know, since we were a kid, like, oh, don't run, you're going to scrape your knee. Oh, don't do this. You know, you're going to get hurt. While when boys get hurt, we always say, so what, you're a boy, tough it up, you know. And because of that childhood grooming, we do not take certain risk, which actually limits our growth in the workspace now, because now the playing field is not different as it was as a kid. Now okay. it's saying we all go to the same office, we all do the same job, but the mindset is different. Exactly. You and I will not apply for a job that we are not, let's say, that we don't think we are qualified for. If there exactly. are 10 points in our head, we have to meet all 10 before we can apply, right? Exactly. Well, boys, they are told to take risk. 
they're told to be like, it's fine, you know, go for it. So what if you fail? And if they match even like two criteria out of 10, they're going to apply for it. Because certainly, certainly. Exactly, exactly. That's how they're brought up. <laughs> yeah. So uh, when I was researching more about uh, this problem, which is called yeah. as the imposter syndrome, right? And I came across two very important research pieces. One is that, um, that there are 19 leadership traits that companies, uh, you know, measure you on when hiring for a leader, right? And women outperform men on 17 of those 19 leadership skills. Yeah. That's one. And second is like, it's very interesting that despite of this, only, uh, uh, you know, women apply for a job only when they are 100% sure that they are qualified for it. Whereas men, even if they are like 60% qualified for it, they apply for it, they go for it. Like, yeah. you know, what even is this, right? So, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, uh, I'm going to bring up something very basic in nature. Um, it's a bit out there, but, you know, we are in a habit of guys approaching girls and girls right. rejecting them, right? Yeah. They're okay with that rejection, most of them are yeah. okay with it yes girls don't approach the guys they like because the fear of reject they do not like rejection at all and that's why they would rather not reach out for the guy they like just because of that fear and that's the same reason with the job wow like do you see what, where i'm coming yeah. from because right. it's the same mindset we have like even with right. the job like unless and until we are sure that okay we meet as i said all 10 criteria only then i'm gonna apply because then the level of rejection is much lower. While we don't want to take that chance with 60% or 50% or 70% when we are there and we're like, okay, how about I just go for it? So what's the worst can happen? I get rejected. It's yeah. Not knowing how to deal with rejection is one of the things that holds us back. And yeah, I think does. that's something we need to work on. Exactly. And you very nicely said that it's right that women do outperform men in leadership skills. And I always, uh, so I wrote one of the articles about the entrepreneurship lessons I learned from my mother. And that is so true, you know, <laughs> because um, as women, we, we make um, very, what I say, calculated risk decisions. And hence we are, we always look at the outcome. Hence we are a better leader there. And uh, same applies on, there's a book by Warren Buffet, which says invest like a girl, which is literally about how to take very cautious, calculated risk, but take risk. Risk is the factor here. And that's what right. we usually drop off right. where we, you know, lack behind and why we have the imposter syndrome. Exactly. So Shahad, while you're here, I would love to take this opportunity to debunk the most common myths around uh, the imposter syndrome and yeah. i have three of the most common ones jotted down let's start with the first um they say that imposter syndrome only affects women true or false false imposter syndrome affects everyone it can affect anyone at all um in today's time yes it does affect women more but doesn't mean that it doesn't affect men what is like, wow. let's, let's go take a step back and understand what imposter syndrome really is. Imposter syndrome is self-doubt. It's about being overcritical about your own performance, your own achievements. And whenever you are successful, you attribute that success to external factors. You say, oh, no, right. it was out of luck or, you know, it's because you helped me. Oh, it's because of, you know, X, Y, Z factors. We don't own up to that. Another exactly. is that it's the fear that you won't live up to the expectations of other. Remember, it's like, again, the fear of rejection. I'm letting other people down, all of it. And this is why uh, I always say that um, when it comes to imposter syndrome, it's not that just women are the, because right now we do talk about women a lot with right. imposter syndrome, but it can happen right. to anyone at all, irrespective of the gender, who's going through these feelings. Right, so, right. Okay, so um, 
it's not true that it's just women, you know, uh, go through imposter syndrome. I get that. And like you very correctly mentioned, you know, generally we we are taught to not accept compliments. And you know, every time we are complimented, we are always say, oh, you know, it's because of you. Oh, it's because of my team. Yeah. And you know, so yeah. there's a common myth that you know it's good to have imposter syndrome because it keeps you grounded. It keeps you humble. How true or false mm. that is. completely false it doesn't keep you grounded it actually damages your confidence because wow. any time because you don't believe it now whenever someone gives you a compliment you're not able to take it and you attribute it to other factors always that's not being humble that's actually not understanding the fact and not appreciating all the hard work you have done to get there so you need to start recognizing that um i know a lot of people have this theory that you know when we go outside and someone gives you a compliment you look so pretty we say no you look pretty yeah exactly this, exactly yeah right? we have a thought that we don't deserve that compliment and that is the base of imposter syndrome yes you deserve the compliment yes you worked hard yes own up to it and when someone says you know i'm so proud of you saying like that should not matter you don't need outside approval what you need is you are proud of yourself you right. worked hard for it right. and that's what is required rather than being humble is what we call it it's actually not being humble um it's just like lowering your self confidence when you you know attribute all success to someone else so right. you stop doing that wow so chahat so then there is a very common myth that you know you have imposter syndrome and that's not curable so then how true or false that is it's it's false i, I want to share something very personal here i had imposter syndrome like major are you kidding cause... me you work with no, the no. united nations y- yeah. and you're telling <laughs> <But still>. me <laughs> yes because i just suddenly um so i was the so wherever i have been i have always been the youngest person to be there and uh, that made, makes you question a lot like how like do i even deserve this like and what if i mess up like now i have to prove more Uh, like am i worthy all those uh questions and stress it messes up with your brain i'll be very honest but it is curable the reason i'm saying it because i cured it <laughs> so yes it is curable and i learned and actually learned about how to cure it there's simple five steps number 1 you need okay. someone to con- confide into actually you know you need uh, whether it's your mom it's your best friend it's a therapist it could be anyone Right. Confide in someone with your negative thoughts about yourself. Yeah, got it. Second, know and use your strengths. So, uh, what I do is that I take a lot of online quizzes to understand more about how I am. What biases do I have? Uh, do I want to change it or do I want to own up to it and say, okay, fine, this is my strength. I'm gonna go ahead with it. You know. So, like for example, I have a bias to action. I like to act. uh rather than just plan 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 so i do not think that's bad in my head i'm like okay this is my strength i'm efficient so right. why did change that so list down all your strengths which are there and even when people outside will criticize it you know in your head that's what makes you unique that's what makes you successful so no do not fall under the trap of what world is saying know your right. own strengths and own up to it right third is accept positive feedback When someone say, "Hey, you look pretty today," say, "Yes, I do. I worked very hard to look like this, and yes, I do look pretty. Thank you." <laughs> and <laughs> That's actually someone... <laughs> a good one, and most of us yeah. need it. Exactly, and it's not about being. Uh, you know, whenever we say this, it's like, "Oh, you're being very like you brag a lot, or you're being way too overconfident." No, that's not overconfidence. It's just confidence, and it's okay to have it. Um, right. another is whenever you are in a room and this is something i have faced i'm talking about more women at work because whenever they go outside to ask for investment whenever they are in a workspace and they have colleagues around them when there are promotions happening be confident enough to ask for what you're worth i always say this because if you're not going to ask you're not going to get it so be very confident and ask for what you are worth and know your worth before that do not undersell yourself right yeah um point 4 sorry i kind of went ahead with too much of point 3 yeah. 
<laughs> but uh, point four is objectively observe your thoughts and challenge them with external uh, evidence. For example, if I say to myself that, hey, I don't think I am doing well, what are the facts that I'm basing that on? List it down and not list it down emotionally. No one cares about that. No. List it down what you have achieved. List it down what you want to achieve. And then decide, okay, fine. I, I was supposed to achieve 10 things. I was able to do four. Is it bad? I don't think so. It is good. You were able to achieve four things. So celebrate on those four. And the remaining six, see what you need to change to achieve it. That's the way to go forward. That's the way to actually be more productive rather than being in your head and keeping on thinking, oh, what, why I'm a, such a failure? No, I don't deserve all this praise. No, right? Number five, stop striving for perfection. Oh my God, this concept of being perfect doesn't exist. It's, it's actually negative than positive. And perfection yeah. is boring. Perfection right. is a myth um the world is imperfect gods are imperfect everything we know is like it's more interesting because it is imperfect and we have the ability to change and adapt with it exactly um, yeah and, and that's and what the makes pressure it that we put on ourselves to be perfect is unreal and it stops us from chasing what we want you know it's just another barrier Agreed. And the, my pressure. clear question is that what, what is even perfection? Like, I, I really don't understand that. Like, if you talk, like, if you give me like, oh, I think perfection is X, Y, Z, I would say no, perfection is A, B, C. I mean, perfection is something that no one has the same definition of. Everyone right. see, have a certain uniqueness. I'd always say to people, you know, what makes us human? Why we are such an interesting group of people is because we all are unique. We all right. have our strengths and weaknesses, and that's how right. we become a better team. Yeah. Um, if there are no gaps, you know, in the puzzle, how do you fix them? If they were just, just all square, like there's no point of it. Exactly. Right. And that's what perfection is. It's a myth. Uh, I, I honestly want to like be very clear on this. Whenever someone says, oh, you're perfect, I take it as an insult <laughs> rather than a compliment. <laughs> So no, perfection doesn't exist. So we should stop striving for it and change our definition of, let's say, perfection or success. It's about, right. you're not, you know, a lot of people uh, say that success is all about money. It's not. What are you going to do with the money when you are like spending most of your time in a hospital or you have no friends or family to spend it with? Um, there has to be a balance. There has to be some flaws. That's what makes us human. There has to be, something more to strive for right so, yeah that is awesome Sahad, this has been a wonderful wonderful conversation i never imagined that someone like you who works with the united nations would have struggled with the imposter syndrome and it's so amazing to have you on the show and help us with your personal example and how you navigated through it and to share these deep insights with us Thank you, Tahar. Yeah, I'm so glad to be here. Thank you so much for having me.